We want to welcome you to Countdown to Courage. Uh, hey, it's great to be back, and it's great to have you on here today. It's Wednesday, March the 17th, and it's good to be back here in the pastor study, uh, coming to you live today, and and uh, thanks for hanging, hanging in there with us and being patient with us as we were away for a few days, and so... What a joy it is to be uh, to be back uh, home. <laughs> That's always a blessing to be back in North Carolina. That's a blessing. Uh, most of you know we were in, uh, we were with, with our son and daughter on our grandkids there in Los Angeles, California, for the last few days. And of course, uh, what a different a different way of life. Uh, over ten million people in the greater Los Angeles area, and uh, well, some places beautiful, some places not so beautiful. Uh, houses literally stacked one on top of the other, and uh, it's 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 honestly it's a it's a different way of life. Uh, our kids that live there have no yard, not one blade of grass, and and so anyway, you pray for them and pray for their people, and and so many wonderful wonderful people that uh, are attending the Haven Baptist Church, and maybe even some watching today. I'm not sure, but we sure appreciate Haven. But we're glad to be back to Calvary. I tell you what, all of our Calvary family, we love you. We're so glad to, to have you on here today. And then all of our Countdown family, thank you for being a part uh, of our, our broadcast today. Well, <clears throat> quite an eventful day yesterday. I'm glad God has a perfect plan. And, and so originally we were supposed to fly out of Burbank, California yesterday morning, about 725 and then the uh, flight got changed uh, in the night, and uh, it was going to leave about 9.30 or so, and then it got changed again, and then flights got canceled, and so we ended up leaving California late, and then we flew into Las Vegas, which is not what we expected to do, and then um, uh, it seemed like it was absolute pandemonium in, in Las Vegas, and um, anyway, I don't know what was going on with Southwest Airlines yesterday, but um, we flew from Las Vegas to St. Louis, Missouri, and, and again, delayed again, and so finally got out of there last night around, let's see, I think around 10 o'clock, 10.30 uh, last night or something like that, finally got into uh, Charlotte uh, last night late and home uh, last night, I think around 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the morning. And so anyway, but we're home. That's the main thing. And so we thank the Lord for that. Hey, listen, this is Wednesday. We're looking forward to the Lord's house tonight. It's midweek service time for Calvary folk. And so if you don't have anywhere to be tonight, I want to encourage you to come be with us. We're going to start at 7 o'clock. The doors will be open much sooner than that. And I'm excited about the service. We're going to sing tonight as a congregation. We're going to sing some choruses. We've got special music lined up. And we've got a message from the Word of God. I'm going to be preaching tonight, Lord willing, on this subject, how to be joyful, F-U-L-L, how to be joyful. And so anyway, it's going to be a great time, and I hope you'll plan on being there with us. That'll be great. Let's go ahead and do some shout-outs quickly if we could, and then we'll, uh, we're will we going to have a very uh, short lesson today, and, and then we'll look forward to seeing everybody in the Lord's house tonight. And so let me back it up here. we got a good crowd on here. We're thankful for that. Almeida Campbell's with us. Almeida, so good to have you on Countdown today. Uh, Eugene, good to see you, my friend. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Charles Campbell, hello, Brother Charles. Good to see you today. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, let me see here. Barry Hooks, hello, Barry and Christine. Uh, watching faithfully from Morganton, North Carolina. We sure love and appreciate you folks. Karen Hoffman, hello, Miss Karen. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. So good to see you. On countdown, Christine Edwards. Hello, Christine. Hope you and Gary are having a fantastic Wednesday. Good to see you today. Uh, Janet Daniels. Hello, Miss Janet. Good to see you. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. We welcome you to countdown today. Uh, let me let me look through here real quickly. Rodney Tomlin. Hello, Brother Rodney. And I hope you and Miss Allison are doing well today. Uh, can't wait to see you, brother. Good to see you. Jimmy and Nellie Daniels. We love the Daniels. Uh, Jimmy and Nelly, good to see you on here today. God bless both of y'all. Let me see. Let me make sure I don't miss anybody. Michelle Hoots is watching. Michelle, good to see you. I was praying for you and Lee and the children earlier today, and it's so good to see you on here, Michelle. God bless you. Um, let me see. Rocky Bird, hello, Rick. Good to see you. I hope you're having a blessed day today, and we look forward, hopefully, to seeing you tonight. It's good to see you, Ricky. God bless you. Terry Stillman, hello, Miss Terry. 
Good to see you. Been praying for you and Russell and the family. We're honored to have you on Countdown today. God bless you. Uh, let me see. Phyllis Hudson. Hello, Miss Phyllis. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a great Wednesday. So good to see you today. Let me see. Is that all? That's all that I can see right now. Now, we've got a good crowd. Uh, we've got a good crowd aboard. And so, listen, if you're watching, be sure you comment so we uh, see you. If you don't comment, it may not pop up. And so, we'd love to to do a personal shout out to you uh, if you're watching. But we want to say God bless you to all of our Countdown family. Thank you so much for being a part. Well, let me see if I can take us to the split screens today. Uh, and let's see here. Yes. All right. So, of course, we're um, uh, in a study right now on 2 Timothy, uh, the book of 2 Timothy. We've talked about the salutation of Paul. We talked about the sort of things that ought to be remembered, the security of the believer. And specifically right now, we're talking about the serious study of Scripture. And we're using 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 as our backdrop. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We talked about the requirement uh, for rightly dividing the word. And of course, we said it's work. Uh, the Bible mentions a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. It takes work. If we're going to learn our Bibles, it takes work and dedication. Then we talked about the reason for rightly dividing the word of God. We said, number one, it's powerful. We said, number two, that it's deserving of presentation. Don't forget what we said, that God said, I've magnified my word above my very name. And then we said, number three, it changes people sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Uh, it's a discerner of the thoughts and uh, intents of the heart. And so the word of God is very powerful. And then last week, we talked about the realization of rightly dividing the word. We said it's the Greek word orthomateo, and it means to hold a straight line. In other words, don't skip parts that you don't like. Don't uh, you know pick and choose. The word of God is not a buffet necessarily. Uh, you just, you, it's, it's more like army chow. You just hold your tray out and they put something on it. And so don't skip those things that convict you or those things that may challenge you. Be sure that you read and study every part of the Bible. Be sure that you're part of a church where they preach the whole counsel of God. We talked about biblical authority uh, and every church ought to adhere to biblical authority, not polls, not surveys, not people, not a pastor, uh, uh, it, not, not peer pressure. Uh, it ought to be the word of God, biblical authority. But I want to switch gears today, and I want to talk to you about this next thing. It's the rewards of rightly dividing the word. The rewards, the rewards. Now, take your Bibles, if you will, and I've got it on your screen, but uh, if you have your Bible, it's always better to look along with me, if you will. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And here, look at this now. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. And so I want to talk to you today and maybe maybe the next few days about the rewards, the benefits, if you will, of rightly dividing the word of God or the word of truth. And how about this first one today? Number one is this, it roots out the false teachers. Oh, yes, and that's a, that's a good one. It roots out the false teachers. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, it exposes them for who they really are. Because how many know this? At times, false teachers, false teachers can be very becoming people, very personable. Sometimes false teachers are very handsome or very beautiful people to look at. Sometimes they have a winsome personality. Uh, sometimes false teachers are very charismatic. They're very, they're able to win people over. They're able to uh to speak very sharply, very smoothly. They speak with a with a silver tongue. You've heard that statement before. Uh, Dr. Howes used to say this, that liberals don't necessarily build great works. They usually just steal great works and how true that is. And so when you and I rightly divide the word of truth and when we go to a church 
that preaches the whole counsel of God, let me tell you what it does. It exposes the false teachers for who they are. And make no mistake about this, my dear friend, that false teaching will ruin the church. I'm talking about many good churches, sound churches, uh, but little by little they begin to get involved in false teaching or their people became lax in studying the Word of God or a pastor got a little lazy in preaching the Word of God and because of that false teaching began to creep in and as that false teaching came in, it literally destroyed the church. Now, I want you to, I, I want to show you what I'm talking about. Notice there on your screen, verse number 17. And the Bible talks about this false teaching and what it does. Verse 17 says it like this, and their word will eat as doth a canker. Now, notice, notice that. Their word will eat as doth a canker. It's the Greek word gagrena. Gagrena. Some of you already know where I'm heading, don't you? We get a word from that in our English vernacular. It's the word gangrene or, or gangrenous. Now listen to this. This is what it means. It means a disease by which any part of the body suffering from inflammation becomes so corrupted that unless a remedy be seasonably applied, the evil continually spreads, atta uh, attacks other parts, and at last eats away the bones. Gangrene. Uh, you've heard of gangrene. It's something that's very dreaded, especially on the battlefield. Uh, if, if a soldier begins to get gangrene, sometimes the doctor is forced to, uh, you know, to choose a very extreme measures, sometimes even amputation. Now, here's the reason, because that member of the body that is gang uh, that that's gangrenous. If that member of the body does not become well, or if that member of the body is not is not separated, guess what happens? It spreads, and eventually that poison will take over the whole body, uh, and that body will die. It'll corrupt the whole body. Now that's what the Bible's teaching here in Second Timothy chapter number two, and many a church has been split, and many a church has been broken up because false teachers crept in and their word began to spread like that poison, like that gangrene. Uh, and it made the church not stronger, but it made the church much weaker, and eventually that church was broken up. Now, you say, uh, Brother Steve, what is your point? My point is this, that we have got to get in this book. We've got to study to show ourselves approved. We've got to hold the line. We've got to read the parts we love, and we've got to read the parts we don't love. We've got to be a part of a church that preaches the whole counsel of God. Why? I'll tell you why. Because when you're a part of a church like that, it roots out the false teachers, which is the last thing in the world you want uh, in your church. Well, hey, listen, just a uh, just a simple just a simple word there, but I hope it's been a blessing to you today. Uh, listen, if you're watching the broadcast and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you don't know that you know that you're on your way to heaven, I want you to call this number that's on your screen right now, 704-327-5662. It's our prayer helpline. If no one answers right away, leave a message in a call buck number and we'll be glad to try to get back with you and speak with you. We would love to tell you about our Savior and how you can know for sure you're going to have a home in heaven. And so please reach out and call us on that number. And then if you're just needing prayer, if you've got a burden on your heart and you need somebody to pray with you, call that number, 704-327-5662. Leave a message and we'll have one of our personal workers get back with you and try to pray with you. And then all of our Countdown family, don't forget, be kind to everyone because everyone's having a tough time. Hey, Calvary, it's almost church time. It's almost church time. I can't wait. We're going to have a great time in the house of the Lord tonight. I hope you'll be there. Come exciting. Come praying. Come expecting. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. Listen, Countdown family, we look forward to seeing you, Lord willing, tomorrow at the same time. Until then, God bless you and have a great day.